Hi, I'm Mrs. Moore, and we're going to talk about structure in story. You can use your guided notes or any note-taking approach that you prefer. So analyze structure means asking how are the events of a story organized? And this is a specific choice that the author can make. Um, how does the plot order the events in the narrative? How does the narrative um, hold on? How does the narrative reveal events to the reader? Sorry, I lost it there for a minute. Maybe it's because I'm like this guy trying to keep track of too many things at once. <laughs> so in structure, um, we often talk about plot as the structure, but plot has a really specific meaning. It's the sequence of events in a, in a narrative um, chosen by the author um, and arranged in such a way that they are connected and that they have a cause and effect relationship. Uh, the author chooses what to include and leave out where to begin and end and so on. So you could have, you know, the sweet meet cute, the eventual argument, the apology, the happy making up, all of these things would be in, have to be connected in some way as cause and effect relationship to be a strong plot. So the dramatic situation of a narrative includes the plot. And that is, uh, it also includes setting, um, as I mentioned, the action there, it includes any conflict that's going on and it includes those rising and falling fortunes of the characters engaged in that plot. Um, so no matter what is happening, our characters, um, a part of the heart of that, of the story is that conflict is what is going to challenge the characters in some way, either in an inner way or in an outer way. And the plot, especially Western plots often center on this. So how do we track a plot? Well, we can map it using Freytag's pyramid, which most of you have probably already seen in some class or another. Um, in this case, we have uh, an exposition starting at the bottom there, which sets up our dramatic situation, the setting and the people, an inciting incident, which forces our characters into action, rising action with a series of complications that make the conflict get more and more intense until it rises to a climax. And that's the final and most extreme moment of the conflict, the boss fight, as it were. Um, it often creates a shift in perspective or power after, and that falling action here is what happens when, you know, the characters react to that climax and the resolution shows how the characters can and will move forward. How does this look when we map it? Let's look at a very short story and find out. Um, you could pause this video so that you can read the very short story. I hope you read it. Um, and let's let's map it really quickly. Um, our exposition, the servant sent to the market and returns. He's afraid. Um, and the reason is the inciting incident. He's seen death and death has threatened him. Uh, the complications are that the servant wants to try and escape death. So he gets a horse from the merchant and runs away. While, meanwhile, the merchant goes to the market and sees death there. And then takes that argument straight to death. Why did you threaten the servant? At which point death says, well, I wasn't trying to threaten him. I was just surprised because, and here's the resolution. I've got an appointment with the servant in Samara tonight. So Eve, this is very simple story. It's very short, but it still falls into this sort of Freytag's pyramid format. Complications rise, the conflict gets greater until the conflict comes to a climax. And then there is a brief resolution. So authors choose that sequence of events not because it matches the pyramid but because they're trying to create specific events or effects from the sequence of events um you can still map it onto Freytag's pyramid and leave things out that were happening in the story like they don't get up and brush their teeth and etc um and usually uh, plot and exposition are structured specifically so that uh, readers attention will be focused on the important parts of a story so you, you would be asking as a reader, what scenes, you know, these scenes, why do they matter for character development? What do they show us about the characters' relationships with each other or with the setting? What, um, what do they show about the characters' roles in the narrative? And often which the structure of a plot would change if there were different characters in that role, in the, narr in the major role in the narrative. So let's look at um, appointment in Samara again and consider what Somerset mom has left in and what he's removed. 
Um, what is included is the servant's fear, which we can relate to because we all have a fear of death, right? The merchant letting the servant take a horse to escape death, which is kind of rare that he would let a servant do that, but it's a big problem. Death is steering him down. And then the merchant actually meets death face to face, which is something we don't frequently get to do. So that kind of changes the story. And what's not included is the actual incident. We do get a report from the servant and eventually from death. We don't see the merchant's response to death at the end once uh, death admits the appointment in Samara and we don't get to see the appointment in Samara. We have to ask ourselves why. Why include some things and not others? And in this case, I think it's not about character or setting necessarily. In this little short story, it's more a question of theme. Can we ever know the moment of our death? Um, some other structural techniques that you will see and that are worthy of asking about why the author's done it. Immedia race, which is uh, the story beginning in the middle of the action. Flashback, when a uh, person uh, or has a memory then flashes back to it, or the story just stops and goes back in time to tell an earlier bit of the story. An epistolary structure where it's a series of letters or diary entries that's telling us the story. A dream sequence where a character wakes up and realizes that they were dreaming as part of the story. And then uh, a frame narrative where a story begins and in the middle of that story you have someone saying, wait, I have a story to tell you. And then the main story is actually nested within it. This one you'll see frequently in Victorian novels. Uh, Wuthering Heights has it um, famously, and you'll experience this, Frankenstein has a frame narrative. So when you are studying structure and specifically plot, you want to ask what do the author's structural choices reveal about the characters, their struggles, their relationships with each other, their relationships to the setting. Um, putting a story in order in a certain way is a way of focusing our attention on what the author finds important and that is a lead into what we should also find important as literary analysts looking at the story. So when you ask the, why does the author organize the story that way, you're actually asking about some of the deepest parts of meaning.